Oi, 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 what's going on? It's me, your boy Waddles, and of course, the trusty Pam, always. Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number three zero. You know what that means. Well, uh, that means we got a lot of episodes now. So, today, this build looks a little bit different than, I guess, at least the last time you guys saw it in an episode. The automatic wool sorting storage area. This got some work in the last stream that happened. Now, the stream actually happened on Thursday on my Twitch at 3 p.m. Eastern, as always. And in the stream, we did this and kind of just talked about random things and then actually did some exploring to lead into today's big project and actually a major, major development in the world of, well, the, in this Minecraft world. Now, by the way, I wanted to mention this boss sheep over here. The boss sheep doesn't have a name, but the boss sheep's actual name or eventual name will be Jeb. I've seen a lot of people call it. Jeb is going to be this guy's name. We're going to do a rainbow sheep in the middle of this market, but uh, I got to get a name tag first. I might have like one or two, but I'm kind of thinking about building an AFK fish farm soon for basically infinite name tags. So that's the plan with that. I wanted to mention that, and I've seen all of your guys' ideas with those centerpiece as well. I like a lot of them. I saw a lot of fountain ideas, and I'm kind of really in love with that idea, so maybe we'll come back soon and do that, but today is, is a big day. We are going to kind of indirectly be breaking ground on the next major development in this world. So, we have a pretty nice base getting set up here. Like, I don't know, it's pretty nice. I'm really happy with it, if I'm being honest. But, I think we're going to actually switch gears and build a completely different town. Uh, yes, you heard me right. We will be breaking ground very soon on a brand new town. Uh, not, not just a building, a whole town in this world. This so-called town is going to be unlike anything I've ever done before. It's going to be really, really cool. But, this town won't only be cool. It will also be insanely useful, but also really cool. So, the project, the town, what is it all for? Well, I kind of need more iron, right? Like, we have this much left, and don't get me wrong, that's a lot of iron, but it will run out. I haven't been caving lately because, I mean, I just haven't been, and this is going to keep going down. That's kind of a problem. Now, to fix that, we could build an iron farm. But, uh, to build an iron farm, we need villagers. We need at least four villagers, actually, so... Yeah, that's kind of a problem. I don't really have any villagers over here other than Sandy in the Mending Tower, but Sandy cannot be moved. Sandy needs to stay there because Sandy is really, really valuable to us. So, basically, that means we have zero villagers. That's kind of a problem. This town will be four villagers. We're going to actually create, I think, a custom villager village that will be sort of part of our base somewhere in this world. And today, that dream, that project, that plan will get its beginnings. So this is something that we'll be going over a lot more as we do it. But in the last stream, we explored. We went onto this map right here, the one that we're taking with us, and found a village. That village is marked on this map with a banner. We need to start things off by getting a nether portal all the way over to that village. Now, the village is in a tundra biome. We found the village on stream. It was really, really good. Now, the village's coordinates are 2,586, 70, 1,782. That is pretty far away. I definitely don't want to run all the way back over there because uh, it'll take a long time. So, we're going to go ahead and go actually into the nether and talk all about nether ice roads today because we need to go to that village and actually bring a villager back home with us. That's kind of a big task, and when the villager is so far away, I mean, in relation to us, that, that task gets even bigger. So, it's about time for some nether ice roads. So, today's project begins in our fancy, brand new nether hub that we built in the last episode. Our overworld coordinates are very far, as we just talked about. The nether coordinates are nowhere near as far, but they're still pretty far. In the nether, we need to go to 323, 70, 222, and build a nether portal. That portal should take us right to the center of that tundra village if my coordinates are spot on, which I think they are. So we're going to be smart about this and not forget to grab a flint and steel. Thank you very much. Now, uh, 323 is the first one that we need, so that would be this way then 222 is actually this way so we have two options here we could either branch off of this tunnel or we could make a brand new tunnel down here in the green section um well i mean this tunnel does go all the way over to i think it goes to 246 actually 
uh, or so. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to branch off of this Mesa Tunnel and go over to the Ice Biome. Exactly what I thought. Here we are at 222. Now it's time to dig down this way all the way to 323. Oh, hey, <laughs> Nether Fortress, would you take a look at that? That's amazing, that's really, really cool. I'll be able to remember that, but uh, that's not the plan today, uh, but that is really cool. The first bridge, that's really easy to remember, but I've got a lot of tunneling to do. I have to get all the way over to 323, I think it is, yeah, 323 in this direction. I have 323 blocks more to go from right here, zero. Uh, huh, that's a project. Uh, so, <laughs> I'll be back soon. Oh boy, it just clicked. I have a really, really good idea for our nether tunnel themes, or at least the main tunnel themes, but we are here, 323. That took like no time at all, actually, and interestingly, right as I hit 323, I found my first bit of quartz. Kind of weird, kind of, definitely doesn't mean anything, but kind of, kind of interesting. Now, I am all over the place today. Your guy uh, seems to have forgotten wood as well, so... I'm sorry, Nether Quartz, but I really just can't afford to have you on me, so we're gonna go ahead and drop all of this on the ground right there, and go ahead and make our Nether Portal right in here. Now, uh, you did not see me skip the corners, absolutely, your guy would never skip the corners of a Nether Portal, so just, yep, yeah, you're seeing an illusion right now, just to be clear. Now, uh, we light this, and fingers crossed, but should work. It, it should should be good. We should be on this map right by the banner. Let's see. What do we have? We are exactly where I need to be, but it's the middle of the nighttime, so we're going to go ahead and sleep. Villagers, you better not go. Don't go into the nether. If they go into the nether, we're going to have a big problem. Okay, so it worked. It's good. We're here, but we're going to go ahead and actually break this because I cannot have them go into the nether. That would be a big, big problem. It's dangerous in there. They can't be trusted there alone. So, we made it all the way to this map, and, um, there's lots of trees, so I think what I should probably do to start things off is, uh, make sure this town is safe, definitely need to make sure it's safe, there's a cat, that's cool, um, it looks safe, I don't see any zombies nearby over here, so we should be good. Now let's start heading this way. Now, I'd like to show you guys this amazing thing right here. This uh, is something we found on stream. Uh, it's a mini Ice Spikes biome, which is really, really cool. These biomes are super rare, but it is tiny. Like, it's really, really small, but it's still definitely very cool. Now, we're gonna go ahead and take a few trees down here so we can get some wood. Then, we're going to go exploring. Before we can even think about making some sort of nether ice road, we need to find a frozen ocean. Now, if you were at the stream, uh, you know that that was uh, one of the big things that we were trying to find, and unfortunately, I couldn't find one on stream, so we need to find one here before we can even start the project today. Now, I don't really have any good lead on a frozen ocean other than, well, an ocean. Uh, frozen ocean is definitely going to be located inside of an ocean, so I figured that what we would do is we'd start at this frozen area, because maybe the cold ocean will be next to the tundra. I mean, I know it's Minecraft and it doesn't always work like that, but maybe. M maybe we'll get lucky and that'll be the case, and... I, I hope that's the case. <laughs> now, since we're already off of this map over here, we're going to go ahead and make a new map, but there's a condition. This is the only new map that we will be making today. We're going to try our best to explore, but if it doesn't work out, we'll, we'll do something else for the ice inside of the nether, and it won't be a big deal. So, we have basically until, what, I think like 2,000 more in, in this direction to hopefully find something. Um, hopefully... I hope this works out. So here's the official plan. We go over to the ocean, we drop a boat, we get in the boat, and then we are going to sail down the coastline until hopefully we hit something interesting and we'll keep our eyes out in the ocean over that way for things like ocean monuments that we're definitely not going anywhere near and frozen oceans. Most importantly, frozen oceans. Now we're looking for a frozen ocean for packed ice. Packed ice is something that we don't really have a good source of quite yet. Now sure, we could tear down that mini ice spikes biome, but I think the biome is cool looking, so I'd rather leave it alone. Plus, there's not that much packed ice there in the first place, so it wouldn't really be worth it in my opinion. Instead, uh, we're trying to find... Oh look, uh, I think I see another village over there. Um, I think? Over there? I think so, that's cool. 
Anyways, we need a big long-term source of pactites in this world for future projects. A big long-term source is, of course, a frozen ocean because icebergs are crazy full of pactites. I mean, they're literally made of this stuff. So a frozen ocean is definitely going to be your best bet when it comes to getting your hands on lots of pactites fast. Hey, an igloo, that's really, really cool. Let's go ahead and check that out really quick. These structures are so, so cool. Sometimes in the basement, if there is a basement in this one, uh, do we have a basement in here? Is it hidden or no? No, there's no basement in this one. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I will put this all back. But sometimes it, there's a basement and you can pretty much cure a zombie in the basement, like a zombie villager, which is really cool. But this is just a random igloo. That, that's really cool. Now, let me be clear, this is in no way the best way or the only way to find a frozen ocean. I mean, realistically, a frozen ocean could literally be anywhere. We happen to live by a lot of oceans, and unfortunately, I haven't found one quite yet, but this is kind of the best thing that I was owned. Oh, is that actually? <gasps> no way. No way. I think that's a... <gasps> oh, wow. Okay, this worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that a frozen ocean could be anywhere like in the last world we had it right next to a desert but wow wow okay so we have the first frozen ocean of this world now hopefully there's not an ocean uh, monument in it that would be kind of a problem but wow this is a beautiful site right here this is a special moment would you take a look at that ocean that is a beautiful site that is not too much further away from my portal that's pretty far but not too far so now that we've found this place it's time to get lots and lots of packed ice i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go a little bit of a ways into it maybe to like a giant iceberg like that and just start ripping it out we do have our silk touch pickaxe with us right here i have healed this up so it should be good to get more than enough ice for the entire ice road that we need to do today now our entire ice road is about uh, 600 yeah no joke 600 blocks long so i'm going to need to fill actually my inventory up with ice and maybe even ditch some stuff like the leaves i don't really need those the saplings i don't need those sorry i'm just throwing my garbage in the ocean but I, I, the ice, I need the ice. Um, let's see. I'd like to go far and, and work from the back of this ocean, basically. I've got my eyes set on maybe this giant iceberg right here. We'll go ahead and start with this thing. We'll take it out from the top down, and then uh, we'll see how much ice we have or really how much inventory space we have. We, I think inventory space is going to be our limiting factor, so... I'll just get as much as I can, and then we'll head back over to the to the village, actually. So here we are back over in the town. I have a lot of ice. My inventory is full, all the way full. Now, we're going to go ahead and make this nether portal a lot safer, because I really, really can't have villagers wandering into the nether before I have it all ready to go. So if we put the blocks around it, that will keep things... Uh, meaning the villagers away now we're not going to come actually back over into the overworld until this project is done or until we need more ice uh, if we run out of ice but i don't think we will because i have i i think i counted this might be like 11 stacks of ice it gives a lot of ice so nether ice roads ice tunnels nether highways what are they all of those terms mean pretty much the same exact thing when somebody says one of those words, they're probably talking about some sort of ice hallway or ice road inside of the nether. This ice road usually links between two portals. Now, why would you do this in the first place? Well, if you can remember what we talked about a few episodes ago, one block in the nether is equal to eight blocks in the overworld. So there's already basically a shortcut within the nether. Now, on a somewhat different note, players, or in our case today, boats, move very, very quickly on ice. So basically, we can combine the nether shortcut trick with ice to make a super efficient, super fast, and easy to use highway. This highway will let us travel and move things through the nether very, very quickly, and again, very easily. Now, you can technically build these highways anywhere. You could build this in the overworld, or you could build it in the nether. You could even build them in the end if you'd like. But uh, we're not building this in the overworld because, again, the nether shortcut. If we build this in the overworld, it would be insanely long. And let's be honest, I would never, ever, ever finish the thing. So the ice road is really coming in. I am now working my way back over towards our tundra portal. And I, I've got to almost be there. Well, maybe not. Uh, but it's got to not be too far away at this point. And I still have 
a lot of ice, which is really, really good. Now, because of how we'll be designing things today, we'll actually only need one single line of ice blocks, which is really nice. That's going to save us a lot of ice. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. So, the tunnel is now complete. We have ice connecting our two portals. Now, the boat. If we get in this boat, we will quickly find out that this doesn't work. I, I can't travel there. That's dangerous, actually. Very, very dangerous. So, yeah, we're going to need to make this hallway a little bit bigger. How much bigger? Well, technically, I think you could get away with a 2x2 two two hallway, but I don't really like that. It won't look as good. So, we're going to go ahead and do a 3x3 three three hallway. So, now we have a hallway that is 3x3. Three the boat will definitely fit down this hallway, but uh, with how things are kind of set up right now, we don't move very quickly, as you can see. We could move a whole lot faster. We will move even faster if we remove these side blocks right here. If the boat touches no other blocks, it will move quickly. I mean, watch this right here. That's quick, and, and it'll just keep speeding up a little bit, so... Yeah, basically what we need to do is now make this tunnel three by three and then dig out these side blocks right here Again going all the way back over to our initial starting point and how much ice do we have left? Oh, yeah, we have three and a little bit more stacks left. That is really really nice actually now all of this netherrack I mean we could use this for creating nether bricks You can smelt the stuff up and turn it into those things, but am I really seriously going to do that? Probably not so I think what I'll actually do and I don't I actually usually like doing this, but I'm probably just going to let a lot of this stuff despawn. I don't need to be so stocked up on netherrack. I, I can't really even imagine the situation where I would actually want to use this stuff. I mean, it looks a lot better than it used to look, but it's still not the prettiest block. It doesn't have very many uses, and I already have a full chest in the storage room of netherrack and even more in the nether hub, so... Yep, I'm just gonna throw it away even though <laughs> It pains me to do that actually it it really kind of does but I just don't need it for anything But lots more digging for me now now thankfully because we are so high up in the nether We don't have to worry about making giant bridges over giant pits of lava Which is really really nice it makes this whole process a whole lot easier and that is exactly uh, Why I wanted to make this nether hub system so high up in the nether Everything like this, it actually gets way, way easier getting to avoid the whole lava ocean thing. Those things are never fun. Man, this monorail is about the noisiest thing in this entire Minecraft world. I mean, it's noisier than the sheep farm, the, the cows, everything. It is noisy. But I had to take a break from the digging to come back and heal my pickaxe up. It was actually about to break. And I'd like to grab some supplies for the next step of this project. These supplies are going to be sand, fence gates, and then actually the supplies to make a miniature auto smelter to make our life a little bit easier. I do have a little bit more digging to do though, just sort of wanted to check back in. Uh, but I would say that I'm about maybe 60% done with, with all of the digging. It's like almost there. But before I finish up my digging, we're going to actually go ahead and make an auto smelter temporarily in the nether hub and throw some sand inside of it because the next step will require a lot of glass. Now we actually haven't made an auto smelter quite yet, so this is exactly how you do it if you never made one before. You need a hopper on top of the furnace going into it, a hopper on either the left or the right going into it, and then a hopper below it. You place whatever you're trying to cook up in the top and then your fuel over on the left or the right just like that. Now so long as this area is loaded in, which it will be for a while, not all the way down this hallway, but for a while, this thing will be running and cooking up sand. Now like I said, the next step is going to require a lot of glass, so this, this is how we're going to go ahead and get all of the glass. As you guys saw, I have a lot of sand waiting for me over in the desert by our mob farm still, so if I need more glass, not a problem at all. Not a big deal, but back to digging now. Alright, so the digging is now officially finally done, and that means it's time to talk designs. Now, I have a cool idea. I think it could be cool to base these tunnels around maybe elements, so magic, Earth, water, and fire are the four things that kind of come to my mind. Now, I realize the magic isn't an element, but I mean, we should make things fun. 
But with that being said, these tunnels are sometimes big giant projects and this tunnel would definitely be one of those big giant projects. So today we're going to go ahead and make this tunnel efficient and easy to use and then eventually once we're actually stocked up on materials we'll come back and get the nice cool designs in. I also would like to customize the tunnels that directly link up to nether portals with basically whatever blocks that the portals kind of go to so the mesa terracotta the tundra snow and ice so this next trick right here is about the best life hack you can think of when it comes to easy nether ice roads so this ice road would work very very well but the boat will slide around and that could get really dangerous because i left gaps here so yeah basically the boat slides around it's kind of annoying you'll hit the walls you'll slow down and that's bad this ice road method will completely cut out the boat sliding around thing and make this tunnel really easy to use. Now I can't be 100% sure about who originally came up with this concept, but I've got to send a shout out to Kevin T. I've left a link to Kevin T's channel down in the description, and I'm sure Kevin would love it if the elite showed up on his channel, dropped a bunch of likes, and subscribed. So send some nice words over to Kevin T. In the fall, somebody had linked to me his video, and I thought this was a genius idea, but we kind of weren't really focusing on the nether hub in the last season, so I didn't talk about it. But seriously, huge, huge shout out to Kevin T. Again, check his channel out. It's in the description. So the trick here, the secret, the key is blocks that aren't full blocks that are still kind of sizable. So that means things like glass panes, fences, fence gates, or even walls. Trap doors, those probably wouldn't work very well. What you'll want to do is get a bunch of whatever block you're using, so in my case glass panes, and line them along your tunnel just like I've done here. Make sure you have ice in the middle and then sunken blocks on either side of the ice. These panes are going to help keep our boat in line in this tunnel, which is really, really good. When boats start going fast on ice, they kind of start to drift around and it's hard to correct it. The, the, the control is just, it's just difficult. These glass panes will make the control even easier. So yes, this is going to require a lot of glass, but I have a lot of extra sand from taking that mob farm and I don't know, I mean, I'm sure I'll use it eventually, but I haven't been using it quite yet and we've had that mob farm for 20 episodes now. The sand has been sitting still doing nothing, so we might as well go ahead and repurpose some of that sand into this project right here. We could definitely use it. Now if we go ahead and drop our boat in, we will stay in line a whole lot easier in this hallway. Now it's hard to show off because we only have a small strip, but I'll show it off later. Now when we have an intersection, we'll do a fence gate. The fence gate will stop the boat from zooming right through, but still allow us to pass through. Pretend we had an intersection right there. We could row up to it with the boat and hit it. If we want to keep going this way, we would open the fence gate and carry on. If we wanted to turn, well we would turn the boat and go down the imaginary hallway that goes that way. I'll demo that one a little more once we reach our intersection all the way over there, but the fence gate starts right there. That is where our first fence gate will go. We can actually skip these blocks right here, but not that it matters. We'll still need a lot of glass panes, but if we can save two, that's great. Now, the ice in here. You can actually cut down on the ice if you wanted to. You can chop out every other ice block and things will work fine. The boat will slide right over the gap and it's cool. But I think things look a little bit better with a solid ice road here, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We are leaving all of the netherrack in, so if we can make things look better in any way, then we're absolutely going to take it. Now this area, this is where the old hallway was. I'm thinking I might just leave it alone for now, but I also might come back in and just fill it in. I'm not too sure. It, it makes the hallway look really unbalanced and uneven, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter. Now eventually we will be coming back into this hallway and redoing things. The glass panes will honestly probably end up staying, but the walls themselves will be changed into, at least right now, I'm thinking the different elements. So for water, we'll probably end up doing a bunch of prismarine, for fire, nethery things, for earth, things like, uh, like wood and forests and stuff, and then magic, maybe end stuff, or just purples and cool colors and things like that. But that's kind of what I'm thinking for our main nether hub nether tunnels. But I have to continue to make a lot of glass panes. Now this is going to be the most glass panes I have ever made in a world for any project. The plan is to get these glass panes all the way in, all the way over to the tundra, so then we can bring a villager back, or maybe two, really, really easily. Now, speaking of the villagers, why are we doing this? Uh, well, um, you guys are gonna laugh about this, but 
I like the outfits of the Tundra Villagers, so I am going to import them for our village project. That's what we're doing. We could absolutely use Desert Villagers, but I mean, the Tundra outfits, they're so clean, so kind of need those. <laughs> no joke. It's, it's not a joke. I, I like their outfits uh, like a lot, so yep, that's what all this is for. Thankfully, I can actually use this as I fill it in. I can just jump in a boat and zoom all the way back to the start and then back to where I'm working, which is really, really nice. By the way, also, if you use a fence gate as your end and start point, when you jump out, you should jump right through the fence gate, but the boat can kind of actually be crammed into it, so just be careful about that. And now, the only other problem that we could have with this transport system is spawns. Zombie pigmen can spawn in lighted up areas, and they can spawn on ice as well. Now, we could come in here and put a bunch of buttons on this ice to prevent the spawns, but I'm betting that the spawns won't be that big of a problem, and we're going for a bit of a low-tech ice road system after all right now, so I'm not too worried about it currently. But if you were worried about spawns, you could put a bunch of buttons on the ice blocks, the buttons won't slow you down, and they'll stop the spawns. If you have other blocks like this over here, you'd either want to fill these in, put more buttons, or put things like slabs. Now, we've actually reached an intersection, so let's talk about the gate thing. So, the glass panes continue all the way over to the intersection, and then they will continue around this bend all the way down. So, we'll basically have something that sort of looks like this in here. A T-intersection with lots of glass panes. The fence gate should be placed right after the intersection. So, right here goes the fence gate. Now, using this thing is really, really simple. If we wanted to go over to the tundra, we'd hit the gate, and then we'd just turn. If we wanted to go to the mesa, well, we'd hit the gate, then open the gate, and continue onwards. We will have to remember that the gate is open, though, so next time we use this, we'll have to come back and close it. Or after moving through the gate, we'd slow our boat down, turn around, and close the gate really quick, and then continue on our path. Using fence gates is about the easiest way to handle intersections on a high-speed ice boat highway. Of course, you could come up with some sort of piston contraption to, to handle the intersections as well, but piston contraptions? Uh, not exactly low-tech. <laughs> <laughs> so now that everything's all laid out, I think it's time for me to go ahead and finish this hallway. Now to make things easier in the future, I'm placing a torch every five blocks. I'm not exactly sure how we'll do our hallway designs in the future, but having a torch every five blocks will definitely help section things out. Well, 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 things have gone amazingly well. Welcome back, everybody, and take a look at the fully finished, super simple, low-tech nether highway. Now, this nether highway goes all the way over to the mesa, but uh, we're not going to actually go all the way over there, but it does go all the way over that way, and I did the same thing, fence gate, uh, like, intersection, and then, uh, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> and then it does also go all the way over to the tundra portal as well now right at the end of the tundra tunnel here i actually ran out of netherrack so there's a few blocks missing from when i dug it initially but the thing works flawlessly it is amazing and this is going to make my life so so much easier now initially, I was thinking about grabbing the villagers today and just bringing them with me over towards our base and, and getting ready for the project, but I don't really have anywhere to put them, so I think it's probably best that we just let them live at the tundra for now, and then we'll grab them as soon as we are kind of in a better position to actually put the villagers somewhere. We're going to go ahead and leave the boat in there too, so that's always there whenever I need it, but tunnel, or at least basic tunnel, check. Now, while I was working on this project, I did kind of realize that there won't really be a need for a tunnel in each and every direction. We have one tunnel going this way, and then we have tunnels that cut off of it going to the north and south, and then we have, or we'll have another tunnel going this way, and then the same thing, probably cutting off to the north and south, but uh, that means this might be a little bit redundant, and then another tunnel that way, that might be a little bit redundant as well. The tunnels uh, going north and south, or, or whichever, or no, 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 this is east and west. Green is east, blue is is west. So those tunnels, they'll, they'll still be a thing probably, but only for like places that are close. So maybe we have the nether fortress this way, right? Maybe we have a tunnel going right over to the fortress and then just kind of stopping there. We probably won't have giant tunnels going in those directions because we can usually 
probably just use these ones and branch off of these tunnels so this one over there and again the future one that will be over there but that is how you build a low-tech super simple nether highway now to recap some things that you could do differently you could actually alternate between ice blocks and no blocks remember you can skip every other block with the ice and it will still work but i think this way looks just a little bit better so i didn't do it you could also add buttons to the ice in this road and then block out spawning areas on the left and the right of this path to prevent any spawns from happening inside of the road now that was kind of mean and uh, a pigment spawned or two actually in the road and this is the remains of the pigment you can figure out what happened <laughs> uh but yeah they kind of uh were in the way basically and uh yeah now it's really usually dangerous to get rid of the pigment yourself at least but when you're in a tunnel and you're closed in above the nether and there's no other way in it's pretty safe so anyways you can use buttons and slabs to block spawns then the glass panes these glass panes will help keep your boat on your road now instead of glass panes you could use walls fences fence gates or even actually iron bars or any other block that is big but doesn't take up a whole block and again kevin t's channel is linked down in the description make sure you go over there and tell him something elite for me please and thank you thank you all so much for watching today's episode hope you enjoyed it hope you're excited for the villager project definitely share your thoughts down below in the comments and as always check out the merch the merch is right down below the video all of my links they're down in the description like my twitch my twitter instagram everything like that and today i'd like to send a big special thank you to my patron ground crazy may thank you very very much for the support and i'll see you all in the next one until next time stay cool elites adios uh, i need that back okay, thank you